Hello, I'm James Wells, Innovative Teaching and Learning Manager for Crayola. Thank you for joining Tra Publishing and Crayola in this special school time edition of the Read Along Draw Along program that helps children enjoy great stories and the illustrations that bring them to life. So get cozy, grab some drawing supplies, and get ready for an interactive story session. I'm thrilled to introduce today's author, Alice Walker. Alice, you're a novelist, short story writer, poet, and social activist. In 1982, you became the first African-American woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction for your book, The Color Purple. Tell us about your journey as an author and what sparked your interest in writing. Reading, which I started early uh, and discovered that you could actually leave Georgia on those hot days and go to, for instance, Norway in a good book. And that was just totally thrilling. Oh, that's great um, <laughs> that you're able to get lost in reading and discover new places. So in your new children's book, Sweet People Are Everywhere, it was inspired by a poem that you wrote that is dedicated to young Brian, who is getting a passport. Who is young Brian? Young Brian is a young man who was going away out of the country uh, for the first time. And as you know, when you leave your home country or even your home town for the first time, it's scary. And I wanted to uh, encourage him to think of it as an, an adventure, you know, going somewhere different, going somewhere new. He was going to China, which really was different and it really was new. I can imagine uh, young Brian being nervous, uh, considering that he would be so far from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, in reading your book, I couldn't help but to think about our young viewers uh, that's joining us uh, in their journey where they'll begin a new school year, uh, many of them a new grade, uh, maybe moving to a new community, and even starting a new school uh, with new friends. So what did you say to Brian uh, to help him feel less nervous that could help our young viewers uh, on their journeys? I said, Brian, you're actually going to China uh, to offer your music. He's a musician. And guess what? When you get there, you're going to find that in China, there are lots of musicians. Uh, so right away, you will have a community. Uh, and also, you will discover that the people of China, they're really very much like anybody in your neighborhood. They're doing the same things. They're gardening, you know, they're you know, cooking, they're working on the farm, there are teachers there, there are doctors there, there are lawyers there, there are people who remind you very much of everybody that you have met in your life right here in the United States. Wow, we all need an Alice in our life to help uh, <laughs> reduce that stress uh, uh -huh. of life even today. And such a beautiful wisdom by letting him know that there are musicians and uh, cooks and um, parks and various places similar to what he's experienced in the U.S. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. That's a great re reminder. Have to make sure I share that even with my own kids. So thank oh, you. Oh, good. That. Good. <laughs> Educators and children around the world, it is my pleasure to share the debut reading of Sweet People Are Everywhere. Sweet People Are Everywhere. Sweet People Are Everywhere. For young Brian, who is getting a passport. Some of the people in Turkey some of the people in Turkey are very sweet. Some of those in Afghanistan are very sweet. Some of the people in the United States are very sweet. In Canada, too, some of the people are sweet. In Mexico, in Mexico, you will definitely find sweet people. Likewise in Sweden. 
There are sweet people among the Zulu in South Africa. And every language group in Africa has some sweet people in it. There are sweet people in Iceland and in Russia. There are many sweet people in Korea. There are millions of sweet people in China. There are sweet people in Japan. If the sweet people were the leaders in historically warring countries, they would treat each other much better. There are sweet people in Congo. There are sweet people in Egypt. And sweet people in Australia. Many sweet people are in Norway. Numerous sweet people are in Spain. There are many sweet people in Ghana and Kenya, and sweet people also in Guam and the Philippines. There are sweet people in Cuba. Many sweet people exist in Iran. There are sweet people in Libya and Colombia. Sweet people are in Vietnam. Sweet people exist in England and Myanmar. There are sweet people for sure in Ireland. Sweet people are in France. Sweet people are holding on in Syria. They are doing the same in Iraq. Some sweet people live in Venezuela. Many very sweet people live in Brazil. There are sweet people in Israel, as there are sweet people also in Palestine. Actually, in almost every house on the planet, there is at least one very sweet person that you would be happy to know. Sweet people are everywhere. Being sweet, they must not be disappeared. We are lost if we can no longer experience how sweet human beings can be. Promise me never to forget this. No matter how far you go or who sends you, So Alice, you've discussed a lot of different places in this book, such as Japan, uh, Kenya, Ireland, and Brazil. Why is it important for our young readers to be aware of the different places and cultural scenes included in this book? All four of those places that you mentioned, I have actually been, uh, and I had a wonderful time because I recognized that the people were, you know, fun-loving, joyful, it's just such a wonderful thing to realize that you are not a stranger, even though you may speak a different language, your food may be different, but as a human being, you are not a stranger anywhere human beings are. Oh, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun? <laughs> it is. We are not a stranger. No, no. Wow. And, and, and we must stop thinking of ourselves as strangers. And, and that's the key. You know, one of the things that we often say in our work at Crayola is art is a universal language. Although we have differences in uh, the actual language we speak, we can use the arts 
and I say arts with an S, and that could be culinary arts, again, music, that speaks to the hum humanity in us all. And it's so welcoming and inviting where we don't feel like strangers in, in the different spaces and places we're in. So what a gift. And thank you for, for bringing, pulling that forward uh, in this book for young Brian and other readers. So there are many ways we can be sweet, as you know, and kind to others. In addition to being a writer, you're also an activist. Talk to us about the importance of advocacy and how it has influenced your own writing. One of the one of the ones that I've been writing about recently uh, in a new magazine that's coming out of the South called The Bitter Southerner. I was thinking about how I wasn't able to live where I was born in Georgia and Mississippi, where I went later and really had a rough time. What I learned was that you know, there are just places where you, you you learn how to stand with other people. And so today, and for, you know, decades, a lot of my activism is rooted in the fact that I myself was displaced. So when I see other people being displaced, you know, wherever it is in the world, uh, I, I can feel it. I know what it feels like. I mean, and, and often I don't know quite to the extent that they're suffering, but you learn something from whatever happens to you. And this is a beautiful gift. And in what ways would you encourage uh, students to even uh, take on more of an activist role in their own communities? Because you know, for a lot of people, they may feel that, oh, that comes with a certain age or experience. Uh, but for a lot of our kids who are aware of a lot of issues, what sort of, of advice would you give them even to um, take more of an activist role in their, their school community? Remember that kindness is always right. And kindness is something you can practice wherever you are. So that if you are in school and you notice that someone is being mistreated, let your kindness flower and go and stand near them. You don't even have to get super, super close, but just go and stand with them so that they feel that they are not alone. The idea that there is, you know, at any point, nothing you can do, just forget it. It's not a useful idea. There's always something you can do. And your job is to figure out what that is. And sometimes, you know, you do that by just sitting quietly and letting what, what is possible for you flower into your own mind. And it will. Just trust that you have the capacity to develop this, this skill of kindness. Bloom where you are planted. That's <laughs> what I took from that. <laughs> wow. Exactly. There are many young authors who are inspired to write um, stories about their interests and experiences. Uh, do you have any advice for children as they explore their own creativity? No hurry. Childhood is long. I realize and remember that it's long enough for you to take your time, that there is no rush. Never think you have to compete with anyone else. They're on their own schedule and you are on yours. So let your creativity bloom within you. It will. You know, have faith. Turn off some of the gadgets. Take time for yourself. Trust that whatever it is that you have to offer us, the planet, the human race, it will come to you, you know, and then just offer it with all your heart. Alice, I felt like you were speaking to me here. I am. <laughs> you, you're speaking to the kid in me. <laughs> oh my and God. May that kid stay right there. The illustrator of this lovely book resides in Spain, which is one of the countries in the book. He offers his sweet talents through these wonderful illustrations. In this conversation, he talks about his process and inspiration for the illustrations in the book. Let's take a listen. Me encanta contar historias. Las historias que hay detrás de cada persona y también me encanta todo lo, lo que es la, la literatura, los cuentos, sobre todo cuento infantil, juvenil. Pues yo creo que es básico para, para mi trabajo, sentir atracción para la palabra escrita. Este libro es un poema de Alice Walker, que se llama Sweet People Are Everywhere, y en el poema 
Alice uh, insiste en la dulzura que hay en todo el mundo. El reto era encontrar imágenes, escenas de todos esos países donde se pudiera ver esa dulzura. Para mí la dulzura la veo en las relaciones. Cada día hay momentos dulces. El tema es que tú lo sepas ver. Hay muchas escenas de niños. Yo creo que a Alice también le interesaba que, que los niños fueran protagonistas. Que si fuera por los niños, seguramente sería más fácil arreglarlo todo. Empezamos un poco al revés, que es uh, por la portada, que hay como un montón de personajes en círculo y ahí tuve que buscar historias para cada uno. Las escenas complejas para mí eran las que teníamos que poner cuatro países en una misma página. Hay una que sale Australia, Noruega, España y Egipto y ahí organizamos como escenas de mercado. Por ejemplo, en España hay la escena pasa en una frutería de Barcelona y en Egipto hay un personaje que está ahí con una tienda de especies que yo para sacar ese personaje me inspiré en el señor Ibrahim, las flores del Corán. A veces me inspiro del cine, de videoclips, ahí. la naturaleza también está. O sea, a mí salir a pasear, ir al bosque, a sentarme, buscar silencios o simplemente a veces observar vegetaciones, piedras, ir buscando texturas. Es, es, es todo un poco una mezcla. Hay un 80% digital y, el, y el, la parte restante está trabajada en, en acuarelas, en ceras, en lápices. Fue útil trabajar con unos crayolas que hay un montón de tonos de piel. Es que Sweet People es un libro de tonalidades humanas. Si hay algo que me gustaría que sucediera es que, que quien lea el libro vea esa diversidad que hay en el mundo, que es una riqueza. Que la belleza está en todos los países. Now that we have seen some of Kim's illustrations, it is your time to draw. Grab some colored pencils, crayons, and paper. We know there are sweet people everywhere, and they represent all the colors of the world. Think about the sweet people in your community. Decide the setting of your artwork. Who will it include? You can add friends, family members, and community members in this drawing. If you have your Sweet People activity guide handy, you might choose to create your own game or draw your favorite food like the characters in the book. I am using an activity from our guide, our education guide, where we are looking at sweet people in our own community. And for my drawing, I'm illustrating my family in the park where we love to ride our bikes and surely there are sweet people in the park. So we're going along this wonderful ride that we uh, usually do uh, daily. Uh, my kids, myself here, my wife. So this drawing will be a crayon resist drawing where I'm going to start with crayons coloring these images in and then I'm gonna come back over top with paint and we'll notice that the, the watercolor paint will actually fill in between where the crayon is. So I'm gonna start out by using, you see I have my Colors of the World uh, crayons here, which will give us some nice skin tones. And I have our Colors of Kindness uh, as a way to uh, support this idea we're talking about sweet people are everywhere. So I'm gonna start with uh, coloring in the bike here. So I'm gonna use my Colors of Kindness because again, we're going on this this sweet ride here. And uh, for this bike, I'm gonna use, uh, this one here is uh, called Best Buddies, right? So I, I love this color here and I'm just going over top of the lines that I've uh, already kind of pre-drawn here, going over the bike. So I'm gonna color these in nice and solid here as I get this color here. And I'm gonna continue with this color uh, my daughter, uh, uh, purple or violet is, is her favorite color. And this is a, a lighter version of that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, color in her clothing here. Now that I have this in my hand. So I'm going to give her a nice color there. And I'm going to come back now with this beautiful color. This is go with the flow. I, I love this, this color here. And I'm going to color in the outfit here of my lovely wife. 
and she's enjoying this this beautiful ride with us. Now, uh, notice that I'm I'm pressing down quite firmly here because I'm going to go back over top as I mentioned uh with with paint. So we want to make sure that this is nice and solid and actually while I have this go with the flow in my hand, this wonderful color of kindness, I'm going to go over top of this bike here. My my daughter's bike is um more of this color, kind of in the pink family here. So I'm gonna go over top of her bike with this nice solid color. So I'm gonna use my colors of, of the world. Uh, this is black hair, and we're gonna use this color here to just fill in the the tires of the of the bike here. Get some drawings in of, of your favorite places uh, that you like to go to, to see the sweet people in your community. Maybe it's the park, like you see here where my family, we love to go to the park. Uh, maybe it's the local bakery, uh, grocery store. Uh, maybe you have those places. Maybe it's a museum there in your community uh, where you like to go and see sweet people. All right, so now I'm gonna come back with uh, two of, of our favorite colors, my son and I, we love uh, blue. This one here is always brave. And uh, this other here is Granny Smith apples. We love apples here. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, go over his bike. Uh, his is more of a of a blue. This, this Granny Smith apple, I'm going to go over top and go ahead and give his shirt a nice color here. I'm going to go to now my bike uh, and... Use this same green to color in the frame of the bike nice and solid. And then I will give myself this nice uh, blue. I will uh, continue this blue for the pants. All right, so now that I've colored these in, I am going to go to my Colors of the World black hair again and just give me a nice solid tire and also I need to go back in and uh, color in our helmets here so you know as we're going on a bike ride we want to be safe now it's time uh, for me to add some skin tones here so uh, with colors of the world again we are matching our skin tones here um, so beforehand I did some matching here mine's is the medium deep golden and uh, that of my kids and my wife here is uh, uh, light golden. So I'm going to go in and add some beautiful skin tones here. This creates some representation of who we are through our skin tones. So my son getting his tone in here. And my daughter's tone in here. And getting some color here for me. I'm gonna go back and add some hair, black hair here using our Colors of the World product. This CDN. So what, what's gonna happen next is I'm going to now use watercolor paint to fill in the rest of this painting here. So as you see, we are uh, riding on the pavement here in the park. Uh, so I'm gonna get my watercolor paint. And for our pavement here, I'm gonna take uh, some black paint, uh, get some water on this brush, paint and use my little palette off to the side. And I'm gonna mix black and white together to get nice gray for our pavement here and now watch what happens as I uh, add our paint to our paper here notice what's happening with the paint and the crayon as they interact together you'll notice that the crayon the wax the crayon is resisting the watercolor. And our nice pavement. 
I'm using this style of being inspired by the artists of our book here. Again, you'll find this activity in our education guide around in the community. Who are they? Where, where do you see them in your community? All right, so when you see colors get really dark here, you can add water to the paint to lighten it up a bit. Okay, so now that I have my pavement here, um, this line here that's going across my page is the horizon line. And this line separates the sky from the ground. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and fill in um, the, the grass area here of the park. So I'm going to add some blue here to my palette. So I have blue. And I'm trying to make the color green. And I bet you know what other color I need to get some green here in my palette. And I, I can hear you guessing it. You're saying yellow and you are correct. I'm gonna add some yellow to my blue so I can get a nice bold green. So let's see what happens. Oh yes, there we go. And if you remember the more water you add to your paint, the lighter it will be, the less water, the darker. And actually as you're mixing your green, if you find yourself mixing green, the more blue you add to your palette, the darker the green will be. The more yellow you add as you're mixing, the lighter the green. So notice I have more yellow here and the green is a little lighter here. You see the green a bit darker. This is where I have more blue here. Okay, so this is one side of my lawn here, the grass as we're going through the park. And we're gonna move to the other side and continue that. So again, notice as I go over top of our areas here, with crayon, it will resist the paint, the wax will resist the water. All right, so we have our nice lawn that's been created here. And this is a nice, beautiful sunny day. So we're gonna have some big, bold blue skies. So I'm gonna go left to right as I'm painting here in the sky. So we are enjoying this stroll, being sweet and kind to each other. Wonder how many sweet people we're gonna see on our bike ride here in the park. And this piece is about complete. And I hope that you are inspired to create a work of art showing people in your community, the sweet people in your community uh, in various spaces and places. You'll have plenty of time to finish your sketch and share it in the comments of this video. When the young artists finish their work, it would be great if you could ask them to explain ways they can be sweet to others. Teachers, you can sign up to receive free monthly resources that make learning colorful and fun delivered right to your email box. And if you haven't already, download the educational activity guide based on the book to explore the themes and characters we just read about. So what last bit of advice would you like to share with our listeners? We're capable of being something so magnificent, so incredibly beautiful. Go out into the world like young Brian and discover your own truth. If we take the message of the butterfly, the message of the butterfly is that the, the wings of the butterfly flying in this way will change the climate many, many thousands of miles away. Isn't that remarkable? And that, that shows you that no matter how small you are, how young you are, you have the power to change a lot. Oh. 
Well, we want to thank you, Alice, for inspiring us today. And we also want to thank our friends at Tra Publishing. And most importantly, we want to thank you, everyone, for joining. So in close, I encourage you to be sweet, be kind, and be colorful. Thank you.